Hey guys, so I am very excited to film this video for you today. Uh, as you may have seen, Tarte has recently launched a new foundation. So uh, this is the Shape Tape Cloud Coverage Broad Spectrum SPF 15 Sunscreen. So I'm not sure if sunscreen is what they are marketing this as, uh, but it's only SPF 15. So I definitely wouldn't recommend using this as your standalone sunscreen. Uh, so I purchased this from QVC. It came in a set with this Shape Tape Airlift brush. And together, these were the price of just this foundation alone. So this was $39 from QVC. Uh, I believe they are still offering this deal on QVC. Uh, but since I purchased this, uh, it is now also on the Tarte website. So if you prefer to shop at Tarte, you can get just the foundation itself. Uh, and you can also, I believe, just purchase this brush. If you just wanted to purchase this brush from the Tarte website, you could do that as well. I believe this is $30 at the Tarte website. This is $39 for one fluid ounce or 30 ml of product. And this is made in Italy, which I found kind of interesting because I know Italy makes a lot of, especially baked gelée products and uh, a lot of eyeshadows and that sort of thing, but I'm not as familiar with them making a lot of foundation, so I just thought that was interesting. Uh, this is supposed to give you medium buildable coverage, and it comes in 21 shades. I'll put up the shade range for you on the screen. I think it covers a decent spectrum, even though there are only 21 shades, so uh, hopefully uh, most people will be able to find a shade that works for them, and I guess we'll see when I apply it how how opaque the coverage is because uh, generally the higher coverage a foundation is, the more of an exact match you want because it's going to be more obvious than like with a lighter coverage uh, foundation. Uh, so I have the lightest shade here. This is 12N Fair Neutral. And I chose this one because it is the same shade as the uh, Hydroflux foundation I got from Tarte over the summer. Uh, so I filmed a kind of review and wear test of this foundation if you are curious. Uh, but I figured that would be probably a safe bet for me. Uh, so this is supposed to be fair skin with a balance of warm and cool undertones. So on the website it says reveal your dreamiest skin ever. Uh, this is supposed to be a light as air, medium buildable, flexible coverage with bouncy cloud-like texture that feels comfy and weightless. It's a natural matte finish that looks and feels like your skin. Tape trademark technology smooths and blurs imperfections. It delivers a soft focus effect for a dreamy look. The Cloud 9 Complex drenches skin in 24 hour hydration. A crease-proof formula minimizes the look of pores, fine lines, wrinkles, and uneven texture. It protects with mineral SPF ingredients. It says it pairs perfectly with the Shape Tape Concealer. And I'm going to try to incorporate a lot of Tarte products in this makeup that I'm doing today. Uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Shape Tape Ultra Creamy, which I think I did a video comparing it to the original uh, because it's getting into the winter months and my skin is just drier than ever, uh, I think this will be a better fit for me. They did link to the original Shape Tape Concealer though, so I don't know that that really matters, but I thought I would mention it. Uh, they say for their clinical results, 24 hour hydration, 24 hour crease proof, 24 hour makeup transfer proof, which I'm very curious to try, vegan, dermatologist tested, broad spectrum SPF 15 sunscreen, and in a consumer panel study, 97% agreed that it made their skin look smoother, feels comfortable, evens out textured skin. And their skin, skin invigorating ingredients, like invigorating but skin invigorating, uh, it has snow mushroom, which is supposed to help hydrate, reduce inflammation, and brighten. Licorice brightens and color corrects, so if you have a licorice sensitivity, know that. Hyaluronic acid and squalane, which retain and deliver moisture for optimal hydration. Prickly pear intensely moisturizes. Avocado brightens the look of dark spots. Aloe helps soothe. Vitamin E is a natural preservative that also acts as an emollient and antioxidant. And castor oil also moisturizes. And it is always formulated without parabens, mineral oil, phthalates, triclosan, sodium lauryl sulfate, and gluten. Okay, so I think that's all we needed to cover right now. It has one rating on the Tarte website for five stars. 
Let's see what it says on the QVC website. So on the QVC website, it has 21 reviews and has a 3.6 rating with 10 five-star reviews and then five two-star reviews. And then the other ones are kind of evenly distributed. Okay, so let's crack on into this. So like I said, I'm going to incorporate some other Tarte products. This isn't completely a full face of Tarte, uh, but I kind of grabbed what else I had and obviously wanted to use like the Shape Tape concealer that they mentioned. And uh, I will be going out today running some errands and you know wearing mask, taking it on, putting it back on. Uh, so we'll have that to kind of uh, test out as far as the transfer proofness. And uh, I think, let's see, it's already one o'clock, so maybe get a 10 hour wear test is probably what we're looking at here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer. This is a little kind of deluxe or sample size that I think I got in some kind of uh, Boxy Charm or Ipsy or something like that. It's kind of a light blue gel texture. And uh, when I woke up this morning, my skin was feeling a little kind of dehydrated. So uh, I kind of aggressively hydrated it this morning. Uh, I used like a sheet mask and all that. So I wanted to kind of give this foundation as good a shot as I could uh, with nicely primed and moisturized skin. I already did my skincare, so I did, you know, my normal toner, serum, moisturizer, and I applied a uh, SPF as well. So uh, that is what we're looking at. Okay, so Tarte does make an under eye corrector, but I think the one I have is pretty old at this point. So I'm just going to go in with the uh, Charlotte Slippery one that I normally use, and I typically will apply my under eye corrector before I apply the foundation. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so time for the star of the show for today. Uh, so anyway, it comes in a nice uh, tube like so with a pump. It doesn't sound liquidy or anything in the tube. I don't think it says to shake well, but it's always a good idea to give it a little shake, I think, just in case. Okay, so let's see what this texture is like. So it is very kind of thick there. And I kept seeing the woman on QVC from Tarte do this, so that is like a stiff peak foundation, if there are any bakers in the house. Uh, so let's get this brush out of the packaging. And it does feel very soft. It's a synthetic brush. It has a nice pretty gold handle, and it does come to a point there, which I think is kind of interesting. Uh, and I think they specifically said that, you know, they designed the brush so that it would kind of get in all the the nooks and crannies of your face. I'm paraphrasing, but um, that is what they said. And I didn't read out the ingredients. Uh, the first few ingredients are water, dimethicone, there's glycerin. Um, so it is going to have that kind of silicone feel to it. And this happens to be a little tart mirror that I got. Uh, I think it was in their like rewards section. Sometimes people ask me about this mirror, but unfortunately you can't can't get it unless they they bring it back. Uh, I did see that Tart had some really cute Christmas ornaments. Like they had a shape tape or not like a, a mini that is like in an ornament packaging, but like an actual like, I don't know, glass ornament. Uh, so I'm kind of tempted to pick some of those up. Uh, they had the shape tape and then also their lights camera lashes mascara, which I like the lights camera splashes, but I thought they were cute. I'm not like huge, huge shape tape fan. Uh, it looks like there's one little bristle coming out of the brush there. I don't know if you can see that towards the top, which is not a big deal to me. I mean, sometimes brushes shed, especially if they're new. Okay, so as you saw, I just applied that on half my face. So this is the side with, and that is the side without. So I think this is 
kind of on the lighter side. I think this is supposed to be buildable. And I don't know if you can see, I do have like one little blemish there. So we'll see how well it covers that. Uh, so I'm going to try to build that up a little bit just to see kind of the level of coverage. Uh, as I've been saying in my last few videos, I was thinking I would have to be going back to the office come January and they've kind of um, halted that indefinitely. So I was kind of interested in a nice kind of lightweight foundation that would not transfer because I would still have to wear a mask and everything while commuting and something that would still be kind of comfortable and forgiving on winter skin. I'd say it looks pretty good. I think there's a little bit of dryness in between my eyebrows. So I never kind of remember to exfoliate there. I think the rest of my skin looks pretty good. And it is kind of nice to just hug around the eyes. I think this brush did a nice job. If you saw the Tarte Hydroflux foundation video, uh, I was not as impressed by that brush. And I think it was partly because they recommended that you um, like dispense the product into the brush and that just ended up kind of disappearing. Um, so let's see. So that's the base width, two coats basically, and that is nothing. So I think this is a good match for me and I think maybe you can see it the most in my cheeks in terms of the redness and everything. Okay, so let's even even this out. And I know they kind of recommend to use it with a brush, but I will try it with a sponge, at least for the initial application, just to see kind of how, how it does with a sponge. I know some people prefer that method. So, so far it does feel very comfortable. I'm not sure if the kind of two layers is quite as lightweight as one layer would feel, but I'll just dot this around. So far, I'm enjoying the texture. It's nice when a product doesn't like completely just start running off your hand. I know the squeezy tube, some people like to just kind of squeeze it directly onto their face and then it just starts running down. And you kind of have to be quick to uh, blend it in before it just kind of runs off your face. I'm not a big fan of doing that. I'd rather just keep it on the back of my hand. Okay, so there's the blemish. I think it definitely kind of canceled out some redness. I'm glad they released another foundation because I like that Hydroflex, but I think the texture and how it set on the skin was definitely more suited for the summer. So uh, it's nice to see that they came out with a more kind of hydrating foundation because I'm usually interested in the complexion products that Tarte puts out. I'm not always as interested in their eyeshadows. So I think like one layer with the sponge versus two with the brush, they look pretty even, which is kind of strange to me because A, it's two versus one, and then B, uh, generally a brush will kind of maintain more coverage than a sponge will just because you know, the sponge is still slightly damp, so it'll it'll kind of shear out some of the coverage. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly put the Kosas Brow Gel through my brows, and I'll kind of give you as much of a zoomed in look at my face as I can. There's that blemish, it'll focus. Okay, so let's put some concealer on. And again, I'm using the Ultra Creamy in the shade 8B. I might have bought a few different shades of this, I can't recall. So, I'm 
I think like in their Maracuja hydrator product, whatever, uh, they have those like 8B shades and then they also have the 12N. So 12N is not always the most, it's not always the lightest foundation. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this brush just to kind of see how this does. I think you can definitely get away with just using this if you wanted to. It's not perhaps as easy as a smaller brush, but just kind of testing out the versatility of it. Okay, so I think this blended well together and I'm just going to set the under eye area quickly using this LYS powder and the e.l.f. Um, small tapered brush just to kind of avoid as much creasing as possible. All right, let's get some color on this face. Uh, so I grabbed the two little Tarte minis that I have. There's the cream blush in the shade Pink Sky and the bronzer in the shade Breezy. And uh, I think these products have done quite well for them because uh, they, I think, have just released like a, a compact with I'm not sure if it's a bronzer and two blushes or or what. Um, so I just tapped into the product with this this brush. I mean, having that kind of angle to it is is interesting for applying blush where you might want a smaller surface area. Not sure that's really necessary, but if you, again, really wanted to um, use a brush, usually for a cream blush, I'll just kind of tap it on with my fingers. And if it does get a little bit too intense, then I will go over it with maybe the brush or the sponge that I applied my foundation. to keep it pretty neutral because like I said we are kind of going out and running errands on the Saturday before Christmas so pray for me um but yeah that is the blush and uh for the bronzer I think I might prefer applying this with the brush actually so I'm just gonna kind of see how this does if you had like more of a contour shade like I'm sure you could like I mean it's not a super like kind of precise point but I think that would be nice to kind of really chisel out or here let's go underneath jaw just a little bit So even if I don't always use it with this foundation, I think, I think I'll get some good use out of it. I can kind of just lightly tap it and okay. Uh, what I have been using for that purpose just to compare it really quickly is the BK 101. So that's like a one directional slope and it's much wider. So I don't know, just something else to consider maybe. So next up I'll apply the Shape Tape Glow Wand, which personally I find to be kind of a confusing product because the way they market it is some kind of like, I don't know, like concealer brightener type product, but I just kind of use it as like a more natural um, highlight type thing. And just a tad on the nose. Okay. 
And that also just really blends in nicely with the fingers. All right, and because my lips are feeling a little dry, I'm going to apply this um, Maracuja Juicy Lip in the shade Rose. Ooh, looks like this got a little bit too... This particular one might have kind of broken a little bit, but... These do feel really nice and cushiony on the lips. I think this is like, I don't know, a mini or a deluxe sample that I got. And I know they've, they've put out a lot of different sets for the holidays, so it's a nice kind of easy, natural, cushiony, it gives your lips a lot of shine. I didn't uh, like exfoliate my lips or anything, but I think it does a good job of like kind of, I don't know, filling in the appearance of your lip line, so it just gives it a nice kind of cushiony look. Okay, so I'm going to do my eyes next. Uh, I'll use the Tartlet in Bloom, which is an older palette, but again, just trying to use some different Tarte products. And then, of course, the Lights Camera Splashes on my upper lashes and the Clinique Bottom Lash on my lower lashes. So I think I'm going to do that off camera just in the interest of time, and then I will uh, check in with you guys before I head off for the day. Uh, okay, so the eyes are done. I uh, used the shades, let's see... Flower Child, Smarty Pants, and Funny Girl. So this little uh, like Tetris piece there, uh, just for something really easy and neutral. And I used the Mario Eye Pencil in the shade Perfect Brown, just did a little, little flick there. And I thought before I head out for the day, I will kind of go over everything with a little bit of powder. Uh, I felt like my hair was sticking to my cheeks a little bit. I'm not sure if that's the foundation or like the highlighter or the bronzer or blush, whatever. So uh, I'm just going to use that same LYS powder and this MOTD brush that I got in my Ipsy, I think. So just a little bit, especially since I know I will be wearing a mask and just try to give this as much of a fighting shot as I can. This isn't like the most kind of setting powder that I have. I think the Charlotte Tilbury one is a little bit more mattifying, but I don't want to like completely um, change the finish either. And I probably could use the Tarte spray on top of it. I don't typically use a setting spray though, so I think I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so it is now almost two o'clock. So uh, again, hopefully I will be checking in in about nine or 10 hours. I don't know if I'm gonna make it till midnight, uh, but I'll check in uh, in a little bit here to let you know how things went. Okay, so it is uh, about 11 o'clock. So this is the nine hour mark of wearing this foundation. And <laughs> I have to say, I'm not, I'm not totally in love with it. So I'll first show you what my mask looks like and I think we went into about three or four stores doing errands today, so that's, you know, taking it on, putting it off, wearing it inside the store, that kind of thing. Uh, so, I don't know if you'll be able to see, that is what the mask looks like. It's always a little challenging with the white balance and lighting and everything. Uh, so, I think, as you probably can tell, I'll zoom in here. Uh, so I think it's definitely worn off on my nose. Uh, I think because it's a lighter coverage foundation and I think it was a pretty good match. It doesn't look too bad having worn off, but it definitely has. I think I'm looking a little bit shiny, which is pretty typical for me with the foundation at this kind of uh, hour mark. As you saw with the mask, I wasn't sure if all of this was the foundation or if part of it was the bronzer and that kind of thing. I think as far as how my face looks, aside from where it's like obviously worn off on my nose, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't feel great though. Like I'm very much looking forward to removing my makeup. So, Aside from the shine, I don't think it looks bad. 
Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is um, I am actually going out again tomorrow. So it's Saturday as I'm filming this and uh, I'm going out on Sunday. Uh, I'm actually getting my, my booster shot uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so I think I'm going to do a second day wear test for this product. Uh, I think I will skip the cream, bronzer, and uh, blush. I don't know if I'll just apply this. I mean, the good news about wearing a mask is that no one can really see your face if it looks weird. So I might just put this on just to kind of see how it wears with the mask and everything. Uh, and we'll see when I apply it whether I powder or not. Uh, but I think I'll do that. I, I'm not sure that I'll do a wear test depending on how I'm feeling. I just want to play around with it a little bit more before I kind of upload this video. So uh, I'm going to miss the kind of every other day uploading schedule that I've been trying to stick to for the month of December. But uh, in the interest of giving you kind of as full a picture of this foundation as I can, uh, I'm going to uh, wrap it up for tonight and uh, apply it again tomorrow and I mean, if I feel like I just, I don't know, need to go to bed or something, I'll remove it before I do that tomorrow. But otherwise, uh, I'll just see how I'm feeling in terms of how long I'm wearing it. So, uh, yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for day two. Okay, so it is the end of night two here. I did actually make it to the nine hour mark on night two, so it's about 11 o'clock. I basically had the same time frame for both days. And I did go out today. I was <laughs> mistaken in uh, the date of my booster shot, so I'm actually getting boosted next Sunday and not today. So I did still go out. I still did wear a mask, but I didn't have any kind of uh, booster effects to worry about. Uh, so I thought I would just show you the mask that I wore today and uh, hopefully you can see. I saw a little bit of transfer there. It wasn't as bad as uh, what it was yesterday, but I did wear bronzer and everything yesterday. So I think that might have been a large part of that. Uh, this was just foundation and I did powder it as you probably saw. So. Uh, right now at the nine hour mark, my skin does feel a lot more comfortable today than it did yesterday. I don't feel as eager to wash it off. I think part of that might be because I had a much thinner layer on today. Uh, I still did apply it with a brush, uh, but I didn't kind of go in for a second coat or anything like that. And I didn't apply any other kind of complexion type products on top, although I don't think like bronzers and blushes are usually what contributes to me wanting to wash my face at the end of the night. So uh, as far as the wear goes, uh, it definitely wore off on my nose again, uh, which I'm not like too hypercritical of. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of things really. I did kind of rub it my face a little bit. Uh, so in addition to uh, going like grocery shopping and that kind of thing. Uh, I did also uh, clean the bathroom, change the sheets, all those fun Sunday chores. Uh, I did also kind of lay against my husband on the couch there. So uh, I think 
you know, for a lighter coverage foundation, it still looks pretty good. Uh, I'm looking a little bit shiny, uh, but nothing that I think is too terrible. Uh, so as far as my final thoughts go, Tarte generally does a lot of sales throughout the year. So I think if you are interested in this foundation, I would definitely recommend waiting for a sale. I don't think that this is anything you definitely need to rush out and try. It's definitely not transfer proof. It feels pretty comfortable all day when you don't build it up, but then when you don't build it up, I think it's definitely on the lighter coverage side of things. And uh, they do try to market it as kind of a sunscreen-like product. Uh, as you see on the tube there, it says SPF 15 sunscreen doesn't say foundation or anything like that. So that brought to mind another kind of similar product that's come out on the market recently and that is the Tower 28 Sunny Days Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Tinted Sunscreen. This is also one fluid ounce and I think this is nine dollars cheaper at full price. So this doesn't come in as many shades. I also have this in the lightest shade. This is in the shade uh, Fairfax. It says it's reef safe, mineral sunscreen, alcohol free, safe for sensitive skin, vegan and cruelty free, won't cause breakouts. And I think one of the things they kind of touted when they released that product was that it was like the first complexion product or something approved by the National Eczema Foundation. Uh, so I'll just kind of quickly compare those to you. They're not too different in terms of shade. Uh, so you can see the Tower 28 is the one that's a lot more liquidy. There's actually like a little kind of air bubble there. Uh, whereas the Tarte one is a lot more of that kind of moussey texture. So if I kind of shear those out a bit. I think if you if you do have like truly dry skin, wearing like a very hydrating moisturizer and hydrating sunscreen underneath this Tower 28 uh, left me feeling like very luminous. So that might be one thing to consider in terms of your skin type and what will work best for you. I've worn that Tower 28 a couple times. I haven't done like a dedicated wear test, so it was just kind of like my anecdotal observations. And what I did notice with this product, um, I think I would just kind of slap it on with my fingers. It was very easy to kind of, you know, apply that way and blend in and everything. Uh, this it did transfer but I think what I noticed was when I like took my mask off or whatever, it didn't look like any makeup was missing. So I could see the makeup on the mask, but my skin itself didn't look like it was blotchy or anything like that. And I don't know if you would say the same for what my face looks like today. I think, like I said, like I definitely noticed it wearing off my nose, but I guess because your nose is kind of a different like texture and sometimes shade compared to like the rest of your face sometimes. Maybe you would just kind of interpret that as like your normal skin variation, if that makes sense. So as I said, I think if you do have drier skin, this one does have a higher SPF and I think having SPF 30 kind of gets you closer to what you should be wearing as an SPF, although you may not be applying enough of this to get you to that factor, if that makes sense, versus this only being SPF 15. I think if I were to choose between these to wear just on a kind of light makeup day, I would probably reach for the Tower 28 first. I had this in my bathroom drawer where I have a lot of kind of other easy apply with your fingers type products, like I have a clear brow gel in there like the glossy stretch concealer. So if I just want to quickly slap something on heading out the door so I just feel a little bit more kind of put together, that's where this is living at the moment. 
I think this one being a little thicker in texture, it's a little bit more on the makeup-y side of things, and I did apply it with a Real Techniques brush today, so kind of a similar brush to the Tarte brush. Speaking of which, uh, I did actually like this brush quite a bit, so uh, even if you don't pick up this uh, Tarte foundation, you might want to give this one a look just to see you know, if it's something that you would be interested in. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily unique on the market. Uh, Sigma, for example, probably makes something kind of similar to it, or at least they have in the past. Uh, but in case this pops up in one of those like Tarte custom kits in the future where you pick like a makeup bag, a foundation product, a lip product, a mascara, etc., and then a tool, and if this is one of the options, I do, I do like it. So anyway, I'm definitely glad that I did the second day wear test because I think applying it in a lighter layer um, definitely made it feel more comfortable and I have a better idea of like how it transfers and that kind of thing. Uh, so I hope this was helpful to you as well. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave those for me down below. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing other foundation reviews from someone with pretty fair skin that is dry. And uh, I think that's gonna do it. So I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.